Hey guys, uh, what I want to go over is <clears throat> what we do with cranks to kind of verify if they're true and if they're good cranks. So um, first off, uh, this piece of metal here um, has been machined down to be uh, extremely true. So my machinist did this, machined it down true. So this surface, doesn't matter if this is not flat, but this surface is true. So um, this setup here is held down with a magnet, it's really strong. Um, and then we have a, a, a simple um, uh, measuring device as well to, to check this crank. So um, these are V-blocks as well. So all these things have been machined to be true. So first off, um, this is an OEM Yamaha crank, right? So this is what you find in like your Yamaha Zuma or uh, Yamaha Zuma uh, jog, pre-bug, whatnot. So um, I wanna explain these cranks on the Zuma, um, they'll start to fall apart around 10,000 or so plus. Um, RPM. So this one is a used one. I have yet to take the bearings off because it's going to go in the trash. Um, but anyways, typically you want to check you'd pull those bearings off, but just for what I'm going to show you, it's just kind of showing you um, a few different things on what to look for in a crank. And you can't really tell without having this. So that being said, pretty much all the Italian cranks we're going to sell um, are going to be really, really good. The Taiwan stuff, I check them all because 90% of what I see is not good. This is why th these cranks, uh, maybe RRGS, um, GISO or GISO, I don't know how it's pronounced, but J-I-S-O, um, they're extremely good cranks. So um, what we have here is the OEM crank, and uh, this is, uh, again, this is what comes in your Yamahas, Vinos, um, and a lot of other bikes are going to look like this. So um, you've got your bearing here in the center, and these are areas for oil to get in here for lubricating that bearing. Um, this is where your wrist pin bearing and everything is, okay? Obviously, your piston's up here. Um, this is your, your side for your stator and flywheel. This is the side for your um, variator. So one thing to mention is a lot of guys uh, go cheap or they, they hammer cranks in or out. So when you're installing a crank, what you need to remember, okay, one side's gonna go into a case. A lot of guys, what they'll do is they'll set a crank in a case, they'll take a press or hammer and they'll push down like this. And what you're doing is you're squeezing this. And as you can see, this crank is not designed to have force this direction. This crank is designed to, to only see force in this direction, K okay, up and down. So when you do that, what you're doing is you're changing how true this section is here. So if you bend this center section, the other thing is if this gets rotated one way or the other, it's gonna throw this crank off. And basically if this crank is out of balance, you know, you gotta figure this thing spinning at 9, 10, 11, 12,000 RPM. If this thing is out of balance a little bit, it's gonna kill itself. It's gonna, it's gonna kill this bearing in here. Um, and your crank is eventually gonna die prematurely. So keep that in mind. When you pull your crank into your case, you wanna use a tool that pulls in this direction. So your case is sitting here, your tool's gonna to go here, it's gonna pull it in one side, you're gonna put the case on the other side, and your tool's gonna to pull it in the other side. So you're just exerting force between here and here on one side, and here and here on the other. You don't want force in or, you don't want force here, okay? You don't want force in or out on this center section, and I'm gonna show you why. So this crank, I actually, um, just to show you guys, I squeezed it in a vise here, just a tiny bit, which is gonna be the same as if you were to hammer it um, or put it in a vise. And I'm gonna show you the effect that, that has um, when uh, uh, checking to see if it's true or not. I can guarantee this crank is not true. Again, the results are gonna be a little bit, um, they're gonna be worse if without these bearings because my V-blocks are gonna be further out here. But again, I, I don't really uh, didn't have the time this morning to pop these bearings off and just kind of, I'm just really kind of sh showing you guys this for example. So this typically, these bearings would be off. These V-blocks would be sit closer in, which are gonna, um, uh, they're gonna accentuate the, um, the amount of uh, how far off this crank is. So let's see here. Okay, so again, machine surface, um, this is all, this is about a $400 setup for all these parts um, to have uh, good quality stuff. So um, not exactly something I'm gonna expect people to have at home, but um, just showing you what happens if you hammer crank in. Again, I squeeze this one in with the vise, and so you can watch this gauge. And what this is measuring is the, the, how much this crank is moving up and down. And because um, of this is essentially leverage here. If I had these blocks further in, you want them tight as here as possible. It's gonna show, it's obviously gonna show more, but just to give you guys an example um, of what you're gonna get, just watch this, uh, watch this gauge here, okay? Actually, let me get a closer in. So you can watch that gauge as it turns around. See how much that thing's moving? this crank would likely destroy itself in a certain amount of miles in a bike. So I have seen 
not quite this bad, but I have seen aftermarket Taiwan cranks. And if you guys are getting like Chinese cranks and on on eBay and whatever, and you guys are killing cranks and whatnot, this is uh, this is going to be the reason or a lot of it. So the major killer is the quality of this bearing down here and the amount of oiling it gets. Um, and again, you can see how much that's moving on the gauge. Okay, this crank I I would not I, I would not run this crank. So you guys, if anybody's buying used cranks on eBay, this and that, um, this is something you have to be aware of. It's not worth the money, in my opinion. Don't put a used crank in your bike. Just buy a new one because somebody dropped, somebody hammered it in, that crank is toast, okay? So that's an OEM crank, Yamaha, and that's actually a brand new crank. It came, or well, it's new. It came in a bike new. We did a full build on it, and this is a crank that came out, and I pinched it to show you guys the pressure that's exerted and what happens to a crank when you hammer it in a bike or press it in. So... We're gonna go ahead and take this out. And so this is the DO crank. Um, again, this is a Taiwan crank. It's obviously gonna have some play. They're all gonna have a little bit of play, um, but this, I believe this one's the, this is a 43 millimeter, so this is a mini stroker crank. Um, again, this one is not for sale. We're gonna, we're gonna use this here in the shop. We're gonna get them in, but to be quite honest, um, the company is a complete nightmare to deal with. They don't like communicating at all with uh, US companies. They take weeks to reply. So I don't wanna really talk about pricing or availability until I have them in hand. Um, and I'm not really gonna do business with them until they can start communicating like um, um, <laughs> most businesses should. I guess I should say that. But anyways, let's get this thing on here um, and check this out. So again, all cranks are gonna have a little bit of, uh, of play. That's, that's totally normal. I shouldn't even call it play, but um, uh, irregularity, I guess I should say, just because that's the nature of it. And again, you'll see on this one where I have the V-blocks is as far in as possible. So you get these guys all centered up and square, and then I'll roll this around. You can see how little this one moves. Um, as come. And it doesn't really matter where it's set. I just have it. Um, let's see. I'll just get it up here. And I go further out. But anyway, this is just for example. So, so compare that last crank to this one. This, I mean, I'm I'm really blown away with how good these cranks are. Again, it's unfortunate that they can't communicate um, more than once every two weeks. But oops, somebody's here. Who is it? It's gonna be Chris. It's gonna be Chris. We're gonna surprise him. He doesn't even know. I'm taking a video. Oh, I hear him. Here's somebody. Maybe it's a, what is going on? Hey buddy. Good time, I broke my toolbox. You're on YouTube. Hey, how's it going? I thought I heard you shuffling around out there. Oh no, this I'm guy here. this in the fucking thing broke. You broke your toolbox? What was the shit going on anyway? You probably should get a better paying job to be able to afford better tools. Anyways. Um, so, this is what you're gonna get with a good crank. You see this thing is barely moving. Do you see these cranks? Yeah, I was They're yesterday. insane, they're like flawless. Look at that. For, for I mean, that's, that's they're what not you, like super expensive ones really either. Not really, I mean, that's what you'd see with a Polini or Melosi yeah. or something. That's really good, so. Oh, that's good. Really good. Good sign of it, holy. Yep. So there you go, guys. Um, just wanna show you the difference in cranks, okay? Some are going to be uh, way um, out of out of true, I guess I would call it. Um, these are extremely good. Again, please don't ask for prices yet or availability because this is a company that uh, is not very good at communicating, and I don't think they really care about selling to the U.S. market. Um, that being said, I'm going to try to get them in, but I'm not going to fight them for it. If they don't want to sell product here, then uh, then so be it. But um, just what you're going to get. And again, the video is mainly to show what happens to a, uh, a crank that you've pressed in a bike, hammered in a bike, forced in a bike, um, and, I, and what's gonna happen likely if you buy a used bike from somebody who's uh, building them in the garage or backyard that doesn't seem to really have the proper tools. So um, again, I wouldn't purchase a used crank. Um, again, you gotta remember this thing's spinning at a, a really fast RPM, and this is just going up and down, up and down, up and down, creating all this force in here, and it's eventually gonna kill itself. So, um, and hopefully when it does that, it doesn't take out your cylinder and all that good stuff. So anyways, I uh, just want to kind of show a quick video of why we do this, what it is. And um, uh, your, a lot of other shops are going to sell really low quality cranks and they're not going to test this because they just don't care. So they're going to sell you something that has a, um, 
a high profit margin. A lot of the stuff you see, China, whatnot. I mean, I've seen price lists from China and Taiwan uh, for cranks for like $15 that they're selling on eBay for 90 to 115. So, um, but I don't want to sell something that's going to fall apart. So, um, so hopefully these come in, hope they can get these guys in. Uh, again, they're just a, a nightmare to deal with, but um, trying because Basically, I kind of quit doing the stroker stuff because everything on the market was junk, and these um, have really, really impressed me as far as uh, as far as quality goes. So, um, super impressed. This is a mini stroker, 43 millimeter. Um, so, you guys have any more questions? Let me know. You want some more videos? Let me know. Uh, post up, share, subscribe, hit the not notification button. Um, today, we have uh, um, we got a bunch of bikes in. We got a get ready to sell got a pile of polini stuff um coming in believe it or not that that stack there and that stack there is like nine thousand dollars worth of stuff this stuff adds up fast for a small amount of weight so um we stocked up on polini we got a lot of uh oem stuff that came in for fluids and whatnot on the shelves and then uh we're i'm, I'm still going through stuff but we got a pretty good inventory of yasuni pipes too um we got some sweet chrome vertical ones for the uh special edition r's as well um, super stocked up on all the Melosi stuff as well to over ranges, cylinder kits, MHR kits, um, cranks, bearings, springs, NCY stuff. We have all this stuff. We have stuff for Dio's. We have, I don't know if it's in this bike anymore, but we have, uh, oh, we have fuel tanks as well for these bikes, which are really cool. They go in any bike. Um, but, uh, tons to pack, tons to do. The shop is full of bikes right now. So, all right share subscribe again thank you for watching post up comments if you have it again um please don't ask about pricing availability on these they will be on the website if i can get them in um if i can get them to communicate uh like normal individuals so uh have a good day it's raining here but we'll make the best of it thanks for watching and uh ride safe